Making a living, that's one of the phrases we often use to describe the work we do every day to put food on the table and keep a roof over our head. But last year, nearly two dozen people in Maine died in incidents somehow related to their work, whether traveling, contracting an illness, or suffering a workplace accident. The year before, we led the nation in the number of certain non-fatal injuries on the job. Every year, labor groups, labor groups, I should say, call attention to workplace hazards in an effort to reduce those numbers. Here's New Center Maine's Donovan Lynch. I could feel the physical fatigue, and it took a lot of prescience to make sure that I wasn't making careless mistakes. Kilton Webb is an electrician working at a solar farm in Lewiston. To get a tough job done this spring, he found himself on the clock 10 hours a day, seven days a week. I really started feeling that drag day in and day out. Well, Webb made it through all right. He knows the high stakes of this exhaustion. Those little bits of mental fatigue are where the big accidents live in. And sometimes those accidents can be deadly. Last year in Maine, 23 people lost their lives working, traveling to or from work, or contracting an illness or injury connected to work, according to the Maine Department of Labor. This is up from around 20 deaths the year before. We today mourn those losses and also recommit ourselves to having a safe workplace. Beyond those lost on the job, Maine is struggling to keep workers safe from more minor accidents. Federal data shows our state had the highest rate of non-fatal injuries at private workplaces in 2022. For labor leaders like Andy O'Brien, tackling this issue means preventing companies from compelling tired workers to stay on the job through things like mandatory overtime. When you haven't slept in um, that many hours, it's like you're drunk. O'Brien also says the federal government, which oversees private workplace safety, needs more tools to make sure labor rules are being followed. So we absolutely need more funding for health and safety inspectors. Uh, and that needs to come from the federal level. But for now, Kilton Webb is encouraged by strides made on the ground. The state of worker safety is an ongoing battle headed in the right direction. Donovan Lynch, News Center, Maine. Commissioner of the Maine Department of Labor, Laura Fortman, says her agency does offer workplace safety classes to both employers and employees in the public and private sector.